to get the same amount of energy. This gets scientists like going, like, whoa, whoa, that's just amazing. Energy is a huge problem in the world. You can get a lot of energy out of nuclear stuff. All right. Now, All right. when the nuclear is happening, there are two varieties of uh, processes that occur. One is called fission. What is fission? Uh, it has to do with fish. Like fish. Fish. Yeah, like when you go fly fishing. No, it does oh, not. Sorry. It is when large nuclei break up. Break up. So an example here would be uranium-235. This is actually the stuff that makes nuclear bombs. And it breaks apart actually after you add a neutron into um, two fission fragments and eventually turn into, uh, yeah, we didn't explain, but two smaller nuclei. Yep. Those nuclei then produce a neutron. This is actually something else, but, yeah. uh, but it is. It breaks apart into smaller nuclei. And then fusion is a little bit different. This is when small nuclei joins. They fuse together. Or fuse together. This is what happens in the sun. Right, so we have deuterium, hydrogen, which is weighs two, mixed with the tritium. They combine and they make a helium, and they kick off a neutron. And also, they lose a little mass, and when they lose that little bit of mass, <laughs> lots and lots and lots of energy. All right, we're almost done. We are. How do you build a nuclear bomb? I don't know, but I bet you're going to tell us. Yeah, nuclear bombs. Sad to say. Um, uh, a horrible thing that mankind has invented, no question. Um, lots of interesting history about the nuclear bomb. You ought to read about that someday. And the Manhattan Project and Einstein and uh, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer and the whole group. All right, yeah, back in the 1940s. Uh, first of all, there's this thing called a chain reaction. What's a chain reaction? A uh, reaction that causes another reaction to happen right after it. So, all right. So a chain reaction is a self-sustaining fission process. Now, if you have a now subcritical, let's define these terms and then we'll explain the whole bomb thing. What's a subcritical? Um, that's when we've got less than one neutron causing another fission event. And critical? Uh, that's when we have exactly one neutron. One neutron per event. Per event, and then producing again another neutron. To produce, yeah. We'll illustrate this. Right. Another neutron. So it's just kind of sustaining itself there. Yeah, and supercritical. Supercritical is when uh, more than one neutron from each event causes more and more reactions. So. If you have uh, a nuclear event occurring it, well, that was started by one neutron and it kicks out, say, three neutrons, then we're super critical. And actually, um, when you have a nuclear power plant, everybody gets worried that somehow a nuclear power plant would blow up. But they always have subcritical amounts of fissionable material. Right. So it cannot blow up. Now, it could melt down. Right. But it cannot blow up. Okay, so watch that. Now, a bomb, on the other hand, of course, is where we They're shooting move. for supercritical. They're shooting for supercritical. So here's actually that picture we saw a minute ago. If I have a neutron that bombards a uranium-235 nucleus, it will split apart into two other elements. I think it's barium and something else. Something else. Actually, it's uh, on here. Barium and krypton. Barium and krypton. So it makes barium, and then it, let's say this is krypton. But then it kicks out... Three, three neutrons. more neutrons in the reaction. So at that stage, we're talking supercritical reaction. Because then if you've got another uranium-235 atom close by, it will then strike this nucleus, and he will make three. And he will make three. So it goes from like one, one to three to nine to 27 to 84. Uh, whatever, 27. Seven times three is 21, 81, etc. But it happens in milli milliseconds or microseconds or whatever, and it can happen extremely quickly. So if you want to have it to be super critical, this is a picture of a super critical, then you can get it all going. Essentially, um, when you build a nuclear bomb, all you have to do is get the right amount of mass of uranium-235 together, bombard it with some neutrons, and it blows up. Now, how do they do that? Okay, There are actually two designs. There's the gun-type method, and there is the... Um, Implosion method. I forget what they call it. Yeah, implosion. Implosion. Assembly. There, it kind yeah. of is right there. I can't even read. Uh -huh. So then, the gun type. Basically, you have um, the subcritical uranium two thirty five, and then you've got some chemical explosive, and they have to bring them together at exactly the right time. 
And once they get together at exactly the right time, you now have a supercritical mass. And then, of and then it blows theory. up. And so you can either kind of draw them all together into the center, or you can get them to have sort of a gun design. And they both have been designed, and it gets just, and then this is what you see Kablooey. happening. Kablooey. Yeah. And so they've got some uh, uh, regular explosive TNT we talked about in the last podcast. That's what they use. And they can Ooh. get it all together. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's TNT. Yeah. Now, we should also make a note that those were, uh, what we just saw, this subcritical, supercritical, these are for fission bombs. Or actually, usually called an atomic bomb. Sadly to say, we figured out a better way to make a nuclear bomb. There's what we call a hydrogen bond. Bomb. I said bond, didn't I? You did. In a hydrogen bond, they use nuclear fusion. fusion. And we didn't really talk about this, but nuclear fusion has a lot, lot, lot more energy than nuclear fission. So remember that 14 million times? Mm. It's much worse than that. That's that a lot was of energy. Fusion, wasn't it? The 14 million? Oh, that was 14 that was million. Fusion, yeah. yeah, fission is probably only a million. That's yeah. where I think I knew that. Okay. But anyway, it's like 14 times stronger. And so they have nuclear fusion. And actually, to get fusion to work, you actually have to um, use an atomic bomb. To get it really hot. To get it hot enough to make it work. Right. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So they yeah. actually... That, We're talking like the sun temperatures here. Yeah. So <laughs> um, we could... Uh, yeah, do that. Interesting story. Let me tell you a story about the nuclear bomb. It's just intriguing. Uh, kind of a sad thing. Um, in the uh, 1940s, um, when uh, they were de designing the bomb with the Manhattan Project, a group of uh, scientists, and we were talking like the brightest scientists in the whole world. The world. Yeah, yeah. these guys were amazing. You know, I don't think Einstein was in the room, but guys like him. Um, I, I understand that the vast majority of people had won Nobel Prizes. I mean, like there were eight Nobel Prize people in a room of 14 people. So <laughs> amazingly brilliant guys. So they're in a room at, uh, I believe it's Caltech or Berkeley, some uh, university out in California, discussing the possibility of building this bomb. And um, they're discussing it. And then uh, a one young man who um, became famous later, but he was not a nuclear or not a uh, Nobel Prize winner, he got up and said, uh, wait a second. And he, he said, wait a second. He went up to the chalkboard. Can I have the chalk? He said, this is before they had computers and projectors and all that. He went to the chalk and he did some math on the board and he said, if we were to blow this up, couldn't it set up a chain reaction and blow up the world? Ow. So he got the chalk, he went up to the front of the room and he showed him the math. And everyone said, oh my gosh, it could happen. They all convene the day the, the meeting for the day said we need to go think about this because we don't want to blow up the world <laughs> <laughs> they came back the next day they calculated the probability said it was one chance in a million and they went ahead with the project <laughs> <laughs> but they they really believed there was a chance one in a million that if they blew up a nuclear bomb it would blow up the world uh, turns out they were wrong that was good but uh, it goes to show you these guys were very afraid of this and they they, they did the math and I guess you know it still of course has killed lots of people by the way the atomic bomb that blew up uh, over in, in Japan, the only two that's ever in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that was the atomic bomb. The fusion bombs um, are much, much worse, like we said. Um, they have tested never that. Never been used in warfare, have they? Never in warfare. They, they were tested on some islands in the Pacific. And you know what happened to those islands? They blew up. They blew up, and they don't exist anymore. They huh. totally Annihilated. vaporized yeah. the island. Wow. It doesn't exist anymore. Wow. Since then, they've done underground tests because, of course, it creates They're fallout. Tired and, of you know vaporizing islands and, stuff. and like you know causing cancer to animals and people and stuff too. Yeah. All right. Okay. You know what? My hat. Where'd my hat? Where's go? your hat? I don't Put know. your hat on. There's my hat. Well, guys. D on that. You and done. We're done. Sorry, to end on such a negative note, but we are physically done with podcasting. For you and tin or whatever for everything. Okay. Yeah, this is it. Done, done. You've got all the all the stuff now. You need to review and study for the test, and we'll be doing that for quite some time. Have a wonderful life. Woo! -hoo! Rock.